these are the different parameters of the screw threads so basically screw thread is is used to transmit the motion or it is used to transmit the power screw threads basically in engine application screw threads are used to transmit the power or transmit the motion not only transmitting the power or motion the screw threads it is also used to fastening that is to hold the two components with the help of bolt and nut by using bolt and nut you might have seen lot of time bolt and nut will be used to temporarily fix or join or to hold or fasten two components there is also another application or use of the screw thread to transmit the motion to transmit the power or to fasten the two component to join the two components temporarily right that is what the screw thread is in engineering component right <coughs> it will be used so these screw threads coming to the history of it this is this slide what you are seeing over here so it is the history of the screw thread right <coughs> basically this was the this was the screw thread was the time it was used in, up by the plateau right that is about 500 bc that much old these screw threads are what you are seeing on the bolt nuts as well as on the screw threads on the screws different shapes and sizes all these were earlier about 5000 bc onwards this is existence right earlier at that period for grapes to extract the juice from the grapes as well as to extract the oil from the olives olive oil right at that time screw threads were used about 100 years later after this archimedes was created archimedes you might have know that one archimedes screw right archimedes screw still it exists <coughs> nowadays in the rural side they are using this archimedes screws it was created actually it is used it is invented to lift the water like the water pump manually operated water pump using the screw threads we can able to lift the water you can acts as a water pump based on the number of screws what it can going to have helical screws mainly because of the irrigation purpose or even to remove the waters that is the archimedes screw right archimedes screw this is what archimedes screw i hope all of you can see the screen i hope you have seen this type of archimedes screw this is the archimedes screw basically it is used to to lift the water as a water pump manually from one point to another point the water will be <coughs> transported like i like i said screw threads are the one which is used to transmit the motion or transmit the power right so this is what the animation of the archimedes screw right this is just the uh, example or the history i'm telling basic uh, introduction for the screw threads right archimedes screw the water will be transmitted later after this romans used this pump to dewater the mines wherever mines are there during the rainy season the water enter the Uh, mines so that it will be difficult for the employees to work at that time also they they use the these type of archimedes screws to transmit the water right later uh, this is just the application to lift the water later these screw threads why the development of the screw thread it become more important because the steam engines train machine tools earlier they used to have the steam engines right they used the charcoal right to run the engines later the trains and machine tools it create the demand for the threads as you can read out here on the screen it demands the <coughs> the need of the threads thread in the form of bolt nut lead screws you might have seen in very commonly on the bolt you going to have the threads on the nut inside the nut that is internal thread we're going to have the threads or on the screws right it create the demand but at this point of time at that point of time 
the standardization was not there even though it demands lot of screw threads either in terms of bolt nut or the lead screws it lacked the standardization because of this standardization was not there so the wide spread of this particular screw threads was obstacled right that means each workshop has its own design each workshop each machine shop or workshop each small scale industries they're going to have their own screw threads in the form of screws bolt nuts at that time because they are not following any standards if the standards is not followed as you as you know that one it can't be interchangeable the regular class i told about the interchangeability right local interchangeability international interchangeability they are not following any standards so interchangeability will not be there they have to use the parts within the their own workshops itself right because of these problems they come into uh, develop the screw threads with the standardization from 1860 onwards these are the different types of screw threads what they start to develop with the particular names with the profiles of the screw threads you can see over the in the screen right there is first one is the sharp v thread unified bitworth british thread bitworth thread right again modified square then again acme thread v and s worm worm thread again modified <coughs> then knuckle then turlet right these are the different some of the different profiles of the thread which come into existence after 1860s for the engineering application because they have to follow the standards because as the industry revolution takes place the component the small components even the screw bolt and nut need to be standardized otherwise you aren't able to assemble the component in the other places interchangeability among these different types of thread what you are seeing here the most common is the v thread right the most common is the v thread on the right side what you are seeing the image this is the parts of the thread generally right major diameter means from this point to this point that is the crest to this crest right minor diameter you can observe this is the root to this helix angle is there pitch right plank is there right the thickness of the thread right these terminologies the value of these variations will make the thread into different types of thread whether it is it can be witworth thread you can see over here 55 degree this 55 degree represent it is the thread angle right whereas here sharp v which is the most common type of screw thread it is having 60 degree right as the these values differs the profile as well as the names of the thread going to differ sharp v thread this is the one which is most commonly used in the engineering applications right um, apart from this v thread also other threads also will be used but the most common is this v thread right see the definition of the screw thread a screw thread means it is a continuous helical groove helical groove means in the bottom you can see here there is a these are called helical grooves helical cut grooves right which cut along the outer circumference of the cylindrical surface earlier it will be like this cylindrical surface in that helical grooves on the circumference will be cut at that type of thread will be called as the screw thread it is used to transmit the motion transmit the power or to fasten the two components that is to hold the two components at one point it is the application or use of the screw thread it is an operating element of temporary fastening right temporary it will be it can able to use to held the two components in practical all engineering components almost all engineering components will tend to have a certain type of screw threads for assembling or for disassembling or to hold the two or more components in place it going to have 
all engineering products will go to have these screw threads see why it is important the screw thread need to be steadied right even though the most of the component engineering components will have the screw thread but still why these the crest root major diameter minor diameter or as you can see over here on the screen the pitch of the thread why these parameters are uh, required to study to understand it it is because the dimensional control right <coughs> the any screw thread if you take if the, the use of the screw thread in the engineering application it depends on the mechanical strength and the mechanical strength of the component that is a screw threads it depends on the dimension and those dimension which will make the quality screw threads for those dimension you need to understand or need to control the dimensions if you take the angle the thread angle the major diameter minor diameter if it has to assemble with the other component as you can know that one screw thread means it has to assemble with the other component right it has to work with other component so in order to do so those parameters those dimensions need to be controlled or else it is not possible to achieve the required movement required uh, the force or the fastening at the required level right so the aim of the screw thread is to have the dimensional control to ensure mechanical strength of the component either the organization can manufacture bolt nut or the screws or studs stud means half uh, bolt half uh, having the threads any type of this dimensional control need to be made right these dimension control depends on the amount of flank contact you can see the screen amount of flank contact what is flank you can see over here these are the flank this portion right amount of flank contact rather than any rather than by the fit in the thread hole it depends on the amount of the flank mechanical strength if two components or three components are held in a position for a longer period of time by bolt and nut it because of the, the amount of flank contact between the screw or the bolt and the nut so hence it is necessary to control the dimension of the threads in order to make sure that the bolt and nut is held in place in practically in engineering components you need to control the dimensions in order to control the dimension you need to know which are the parameters involved in the screw threads for that reason this model is kept to know what are the different types of thread or different parameters of the thread right so this is the definition of the screw thread it is a helical group cut along the circum outer circumference of the cylindrical surface it is called screw thread so these are some of the different <coughs> applications of the screw thread you can see the first one you might have seen in the machine shop i think most of you have operated the machine shop in the machine shop the lathe right in that lathe this is the lead screw right lead screw lead screw will does not have v thread rather than that it's going to have the square threads right lead screw i will doing in the lab you can able to see that one on the lathe you're going to have this lead screw this is to engage the carriage for thread cutting operation in the trip in the uh, machine shop lab on the lathe while doing the experiment you can you can able to know the use of this lead screw right you can see over here at the bottom this is screw jack right screw jack the the function of this screw jack is to lift the entire car for to exchange of the wheels right or to do any of the lifting mechanism in order to lift that one in the um, in the cam day you, you have done this right screw jack assembly of the screw jack these threads what it is going to have it is also going to have the square thread between v and the square thread the major or the high capability of uh, withstanding the load is for the square thread not for the v thread for that reason wherever load bearing the threads will be there they tend to have the square threads right 
these are some of the different types of screws or even the studs bolts where it possess the different screws right so there is about the definition the definition and the introduction of the screw thread see here in the screw thread uh, there are external thread as well as internal thread all of you can see the screen right there are external thread as well as internal thread if the thread is on the bolt then it is called external thread if the thread is in the nut then it is called internal thread you can see the image on the right side this image i will going to use multiple times in the coming slides this yellow color image what i am showing here this i'll going to use for the multiple times so that you can able to understand what the sentences what it is been written over here see for the first one external thread in the here it is represented as external thread the left one right external thread usually this will be there on the bolts you can see the example bolts screw or stud so here this is the stud and these are the threads which is there on the exterior right a thread which is formed on the exterior that is a helical groove which is formed on the exterior or outside the workpiece then it is called as external thread bolt screws or studs suppose if the thread or the helical groove made on the interior you can see that yellow color image here internal thread if it is made on the interior or <coughs> inside the workpiece then it is known as internal thread this is the example of nut you can see here example nut you can see this animation image the bolt and nut bolt or screw or stud possesses the thread on the exterior whereas the nut possesses the thread in the interior there is internal thread this is external thread right so see this here apart from this the major diameter minor diameter see here this is the major diameter i hope all of you can see the screen right on the left side external thread is there right side internal thread is there major diameter from this crest you can see here this is the crest this is external thread this is internal thread crest for the external thread is outside here whereas here for the internal thread crest is here you can see the arrow mark right again the root for external thread the root is represented here at the bottom similarly over here the root for the internal thread is this one not observe it right crest for this here whereas for the internal thread is here root for the external thread will be at the bottom here whereas for the internal thread it will be at the top so major diameter for <coughs> the external or internal thread will be the outermost major highest or biggest diameter you can see the figure comparison external internal you can see the minor diameter here at this point this is the smallest diameter either it can be for external diameter or it can be for internal diameter this is the smallest diameter so all of you mute yourself Okay, right. So, what is it? Right, major diameter, minor diameter for external thread or internal thread. This is the pitch diameter in between major and minor. So these things we will going to explain again in detail in the coming slides. As of now, understood right? External thread, internal thread. <coughs> See here, another image which shows the external thread, internal thread. External thread. This you take the example of the bolt. This you take the example of the nut inside. This is outside. Major diameter here, outermost. B 
biggest diameter. Here also major diameter means biggest one. Minor diameter means the smallest one. Here also major means the smallest one. Pitch diameter it is in between with respect to the pitch line is concerned. So external internal threads. You can see here major diameter, right? Major diameter means the largest diameter. Either it can be for internal thread or external thread. Major diameter is the largest diameter. You can observe the both figure external thread, internal thread. This is nut, this is bolt. Major diameter is largest diameter, either for external thread or for the internal thread. Right? Understood? So, minor diameter means the smallest diameter on internal thread or external thread this is the smallest diameter you can observe the red color one minor diameter here also minor diameter with respect to external thread with respect to internal threads you can observe this image also because the space is not there that's why i made it into this <coughs> minor diameter major diameter pitch then the pitch diameter in between Right, these things I will explain again in the coming slides. As of now, understood, right? External thread, internal thread, major diameter, minor diameter. Major diameter is the largest diameter for either internal thread or external thread. Minor diameter is smallest diameter either for external thread or internal thread. See now the types of screw threads, or you can call it as the use of the screw threads. There are two types of screw threads basically V thread and transmission thread. As the name represents V thread, here you can see the form. It is the shape. Because of that, the is the V threads. The angle thread angle is 60 degree. Right? V threads. See here, it is a use for fastening purpose. You can see the image here, the bottom one, see the cursor. This image, this is for fastening. Two components or two plates it will be held by a stud with a nut for fastening purpose they're going to use this v threads right these are simple in design and quick to manufacture right v threads this is one type of screw thread v thread the angle thread angle is 60 degree v threads the second type of screw thread is transmission threads so as the name implies transmission to transmit power or to transmit the motion like i said in the first slide itself the use or function of the screw thread is to transmit the power transmit the motion or to <coughs> fasten the two components v thread transmission thread to transmit motion and power that is to cause displacement in mechanism transmission square thread you have seen that image screw jack it is having the square threads because it has to transmit the power it has to withstand high amount of <coughs> load transmit the motion right that's why you can't use the v thread there for screw jack they have to use the square thread because square it going to have you can see observe here the square the amount of area what it consists of is more compared to v so more the area here more the load bearing capacity for that reason this is the square thread what you're seeing the bottom left one see the cursor this is the square thread that's why this is the one which is used in the screw jacks to lift the car for exchanging of the wheels that much of load bearing capacity you're going to have you can't use this this v thread in the screw jack right Again, the lead screw, you can see here, lead screw. <clears throat> On the lathe, to perform thread cutting operation, the carriage has to engage with its lead screw automatically. In order to cut the thread on the cylindrical surface, the carriage on the lathe has to engage to the lead screw, right? So these are the types of screw threads, V thread, transmission thread. I hope all of you understood, right? V threads. These two are V threads. What you are seeing, these two are the transmission thread, square thread or acme thread. Right? 
that should know types of screw threads <coughs> see here next uh, topic here you can see the image one start or single thread you can see right single start two start four start or multiple start threads usually in the engineering applications in the industries they will call the screw threads in the form of single start thread two start thread or four start or multiple start thread see single start here having single thread this is one pitch one pitch is equal to one lead then you're going to call it as single start this is not there in the textbook but you need to understand this to understand the definitions of the lead or pitch in the screw thread which i will going to discuss in the coming slides you can observe in the figure here lead you can observe in the second figure here this is the single start single start l is equal to p here it is mentioned l is equal to l represent lead right lead is equal to p p is pitch you can see this figure also here you can the cursor pitch in single start thread <coughs> one lead is equal to one pitch single start whereas you come for the two start or double threads here you can see that how it changes blue color lines extra right see here double start this here one lead is equal to two pitches two times the pitch you can observe here one lead here lead from this point to this point one lead is equal to <coughs> having the two times the pitch from here to here one pitch from here to here another pitch so that's why l is equal to 2p 2 pitch if you take triple start see three leads are there green red blue L is equal to three times the pitch. See here, observe this. L is equal to from this to this one, from here to here another pitch, from here to here another pitch. Three pitch. One lead is equal to three pitch. So that is what single start thread, double start thread, triple start thread, or multiple start thread. Among these start thread, single, double, triple, which one you think? You can able to transmit the motion or power at a very high faster rate single start double start triple start is there among all these things the most the fast one or the thread which will going to transmit the power with less amount of time the number of turns will be more will be for triple start in this example as compared to the single because in one turn three leads will be moving you can see the animation here right you can see here single start right single start you can see the red arrow mark how many distance it is moving in this case single single start the same thing if you see the double start the red arrow how many distance it is moving in single rotation right again in the four start thread that is lead is equal to 4p one lead is equal to four times the pitch here that's why four color it is mentioned i hope all of you can getting right four colors it is using here one lead is equal to four pitches here see how many distance <coughs> this yellow color sorry this red arrow mark is moving from this point to this point this is much at a faster pace as compared to the single or double so in the engineering application depending on what sort of application they are using the bolts or the screw threads they will want to use that start thread whether it can be single double multiple or four start thread in this case one p what times the pitch in this case one lead is equal to 2p double thread double start 2p here the first one one start is equal to that is one lead is equal to one pitch right so this is about the starts of the thread this is required 
to understand the coming topic right start single double multiple start or triple or four start threads depending on application they will go to use that start thread right see now this is important one terminologies of screw thread usually in the video question paper they keep on asking about explain the terminologies of screw thread in the gear also gear tooth terminology you might have studied right already in the kinematics of machine gear tooth terminologies similarly here screw thread terminologies for the screw thread which are the different terminologies or special words it is used to <coughs> control the screw thread or to measure or to check the screw threads terminologies you can see the image here here this is the screw what you are observing here that screw the highlighted one portion here you can see the cursor this is been magnified to this size this thread v thread what you are seeing here it is been magnified and for this magnified view they mentioned the terminologies different terminologies here axis of the thread you can see here axis of the thread right you can see the cursor right axis of the <coughs> thread crest of the thread again root of the thread one by one we'll uh, define it angle of the thread you can see here thread angle angle of the thread flank angle you can see here flank angle pitch you can see here pitch right let let is not mentioned but i shown in the previous slide right if it is single start thread one let is equal to one pitch it will explain again next slide let angle the angle subtended that i will explain again addendum you can see here in this image itself addendum here right didendum here at the bottom right major diameter we will just mention major diameter minor diameter you can see here minor diameter helix angle it is not mentioned <coughs> later in another figure i will show that one helix angle effective diameter or it is also called pitch diameter <coughs> you can see here pitch diameter it is also called effective diameter again <coughs> functional or virtual diameter functional or virtual diameter these terminologies will be discussed one by one right this is the, the same figure this is the enlarged view of it you can observe it Right, axis of the thread. Those things you just observe it once before starting with the definitions of these elements. Right, we will discuss one by one. So, axis of the thread. See here, this is the axis. Like I said in the earlier one, this figure I will going to use it again. Right. axis of the thread this is the imaginary line this is axis of the thread this is the imaginary line running longitudinally through the center of the screw it can be either external thread or it can be either internal thread it is the axis of the thread right the center axis it is just a imaginary line for the measurement purpose right axis of the thread pitch you can observe here this figure pitch right here also you can observe pitch the thread right the from one point to other point that is the distance from a point on a screw thread to a corresponding point on the next or adjacent screw thread measured 
parallel to the axis of the screw thread this is called pitch right it is shown as the distance from the center of one thread of the crest to another crest see this is the crest you can see here crest from one crest of the thread to the another crest of the thread it is called one pitch right one pitch of a thread again let le ad here you can observe in this image led see here it is one start as i told in the previous slide single start double start triple start like that here it is one start one start means having pitch one led is equal to one pitch you can observe it both are same right here led here pitch basically led means it is the distance of the screw thread advance in one term one complete rotation of the screw thread whatever the thread which advances into the other component that distance is called as the lead one complete rotation of the screw how much of the screw thread advances inside that is considered as lead in one start this lead is equal to pitch suppose if you take here for double start you can see the sentence here for double start lead is equal to two times the pitch you can see the figure here see the right side figure bottom one for two starts one pitch is equal to or one let here let is equal to two times the pitch you can see here it is two start there are different colors are there yellow and gray color here let is equal to two times the pitch from this to this one pitch from here to here another pitch two pitch so one led is equal to two pitch because it is two start that means in one rotation two threads or two pitch will be enter into the another component that is one single rotation two threads are moving inside the other component that's what is called two starts so here led is equal to two times the pitch similarly if it is three starts one led is equal to three pitch three threads will be entering inside the component for that reason i have explained it in the previous slide itself what is led what is pitch i hope you understood that one the meaning of this led is equal to two times the pitch understood led next is the thread form <clears throat> the cross section of the thread cut by a plane containing the axis thread form form means the shape the cross section of the thread cut by a plane containing the axis if you cut it if it look like the v shape then it is called considered to be as v form thread v shape if it is in the form of square it is considered to be a square thread based on the cut section you can able to decide which type of thread it is that is the thread form major diameter you can observe here major diameter the same image i have shown in the previous slide major diameter see here this is the diameter of imaginary cylinder coaxial with a screw which just touches the crest of the external thread here major diameter external thread is this one crest means this point all of you can see right this point is the crest of the external thread from this point to the this point it is considered to be as major diameter if it is external thread similarly if you go for the internal thread see the sentence here you can read the sentence or root of internal threads it is reverse if you see the figure here internal thread this is root right for this this is the root sorry right this root they are mentioned it as major diameter you can observe major diameter if in case of internal threads it is the distance between the two roots the root at the top and the root at the bottom this is called major diameter for the internal threads that's why here i have bolded that one roots of internal threads 
if it is internal thread it is root if it is external thread it is crest major diameter it is also called nominal diameter the other name of major diameter is also called nominal diameter if it is external thread it is from crest to the crest if it is internal thread it is from the root to root major diameter it is the highest diameter or largest diameter in the screw thread irrespective of whether it is an external thread or internal thread understood <coughs> one major diameter you can observe in this image also again the same image i have taken again multiple times you can observe it major diameter right largest diameter it can be either the external thread or it can be the internal thread in if it is internal thread this is called root if it is external thread this is called crest right so major diameter is this for internal thread and external thread next will be the minor diameter you can see in this image here minor diameter again this is the diameter of imaginary cylinder right so now again minor diameter if in case of external thread you see in the image if in case of external thread for minor diameter this is from root to root minor diameter right from root to the root in the external thread it is minor diameter whereas here in the internal thread here it is from see the minor diameter from where to where it is be mentioned here minor diameter it is from crest to crest reverse right minor diameter in the case of external thread it is from root to root whereas in case of internal thread minor diameter is from crest to crest minor diameter as the name implies it is the smallest diameter irrespective of whether it is external thread or internal thread the next one is pitch diameter or it is also called effective diameter pitch diameter or effective diameter you can observe here the same image i have taken from the previous slide pitch diameter this double arrow mark indicate this thread you have to assume right this this thread also the thread is there you can observe the pitch diameter here also right pitch diameter from this line to this line this is pitch diameter or effective diameter so it is a diameter of imaginary cylinder coaxial with the axis of thread and intersect the flank of the thread the flank of the thread you can see here pitch diameter this is called flank again observe the cursor flank right flank of the thread such that the width of the thread and width of spaces between the threads are equal the width of the thread and width of the spaces between the threads are equal that is called effective diameter or pitch diameter these are just definitions by looking at the image you have to understand with the sentences right flank next up next is flank you can see the image here these are flanks right so it is thread surface that connect crest with the root this is the crest you can observe here the cursor this is the crest and this is the root of the thread this is the crest of the thread this is the root of the thread which connect between the crest and the root this is the flank the amount of flank contact with other thread is the one which indicate the mechanical strength of the component it depends on the amount of these flank contact with other thread and this flank is the one which connect crest to the root the next is depth of thread you can see here in this image yellow color image here depth of the thread you can see here the cursor it is distance between crest and the root measure perpendicular to the axis of the screw 
So this is the axis of the screw. For this axis of the screw, with respect to this perpendicular to it, from the crest to the root, this distance is called depth of the thread. Right? That is also required <coughs> to measure, to inspect during the engineering component, during the engineering assembly. Right? Depth of thread. I hope this much you understood the terminologies. Right? So next, the same image I am taking here. Angle of thread. You can see here thread angle. It is mentioned as thread angle. Angle of thread. It is the included angle. The side of this to this. It is. It is the included angle between the sides of the threads measured in the axial plane. Thread angle. If it is a V thread, this thread angle will be sixty degree. If it is a Whitworth thread, British thread, this thread angle will be 55 degree. Right? Thread angle. Helix angle. You can see this another image is there. What now? Helix angle. See here. We mentioned as helix angle. See, these are the angle which measured on the helix of the thread. See here. Angle that <coughs> the thread makes when plane perpendicular to the thread axis this is called helix angle next is flank angle the flank angle is also called half of the thread angle you can observe this image this is thread angle right you can see the cursor thread angle is from here to here flank angle means half of the thread angle right it is half of the thread angle it is half of the included angle of the thread or else you can write as half of the thread angle is flank angle see addendum you can observe here addendum from this point to this point is addendum it is a distance between crest and the pitch line right this is pitch. this is the crest all of you seeing right you can see the image this is the crest from this point to this line you can see here it is mentioned as pitch line from this point to this point it is addendum which is measured perpendicular to the axis of the thread this is the axis with respect to this the measurement is perpendicular to the axis of the thread this is addendum from the crest to the pitch line similarly didendum we take it is the distance between pitch line and the root measured along perpendicular to the axis of the thread it is called addendum you can observe addendum from crest to the pitch line 